In this video, we'll demonstrate how to write a data variable to an audio file in MATLAB, and we'll also cover some of the basics of digital audio, such as sampling rate and bit depth. Before we get started, make sure you have a working copy of MATLAB installed on your machine, and that you've downloaded the zipped file containing the code for this example at the link provided below. As you follow along, feel free to pause the video at each step. First, double-click on the zipped folder you've downloaded, then navigate to MATLAB code, simplified code. Now we'll double click on the audify single vector.m file and we'll have a look at MATLAB's audification function. You'll remember from the previous tutorial that in order to audify our one dimensional time series, we need to find the maximum and minimum data values and scale the data such that all values fall between 1 and negative 1. That part of the process is handled in these three lines of code. The wavewrite function writes the data in waveform audio file format, which has the file extension WAV. The first argument in this function contains the name of the variable where the data are stored. The second and third arguments are the sampling rate and bit depth of the audio respectively. And the fourth argument is the name of the file written as a string with single quotes. The sampling rate is measured in hertz, which is a scientific term for cycles per second. Lowering the sampling rate is similar to slowing down the speed of a turntable. The frequency spectrum of the audio will be shifted down as the rate of sample playback drops. In this way, Adjusting the sampling rate can be a useful way to bring different micro and macro features into focus. The range of human hearing is approximately 20 Hz to 20 kHz, and a sampling rate of 44,100 Hz is appropriate in most instances. Bit depth refers to the number of bits used to encode the amplitude of each audio sample. We can calculate the number of possible discrete amplitude values by calculating 2 to the power of the number of bits per sample. A 16-bit audio sample can have 65,536 potential amplitude values, and for a 24-bit sample, this number jumps to 16,777,216. The maximum dynamic range of an audio system in decibels can be approximated by multiplying the bit depth by 6. So a 16-bit audio file has a dynamic range of approximately 96 decibels, while a 24-bit file has a dynamic range of approximately 144 decibels. The industry standard is 16 bits, though 24 or 32 bits are recommended if you plan to do a significant amount of signal processing on the resulting audio file. Now navigate to the simplified code folder and open the file writesinewave.m. While it's a bit more straightforward to generate a vector filled with random numbers, the resulting audio can be quite harsh on the ears. In this first block of code, we're generating a sinusoidal waveform with a duration of 1 second and a frequency of 880 hertz. And our familiar audification routine is here below. When you hit run, you may be informed that the file is not located in the current folder or on the MATLAB path. Clicking add to path will write our resulting audio to the MATLAB folder, while clicking change folder will write the audio to the folder containing our code. For now, we'll click the change folder button. You may see a message in the command window that data was clipped during the audio writing process. However, this usually indicates that you've just touched the upper bound of the maximum allowable data range and this will not have any audible effect on the resulting audio signal. When we navigate back to the simplified code folder, we see the file sinewaveaudio.wave. Before listening to the audio, turn down your system volume to a relatively low level. Make sure you do this before playing back any audified data set, as a sudden burst of noise can potentially cause hearing loss. On a Macintosh, you can simply hit the space bar to preview the sound file, and this is a quick way to listen through a folder of audified data examples. Double-clicking the file will open it up in your default media player, and .wave files can be opened in a variety of applications, including iTunes, QuickTime, and Windows Media Player. When you play the file, you should hear a basic sine wave with a duration of one second. Now let's jump back into MATLAB and cut the sampling rate in half to 22,050 samples per second, and let's rename the file sinewaveaudio2250.wave. Now go ahead and run the program again. Our second file is located in the same folder, and when we pull up the preview, we'll hear that the sine tone is now an octave lower. Additionally, as our sampling rate has been cut in half, this new audio file is twice as long. If we were to cut the sampling rate in half once again, the resulting audio would be an octave lower still, with a duration of 4 seconds. When working with an extremely short dataset, it may make sense to use a lower sampling rate in some instances to slow down the temporal progression of the audio. You should now have a general understanding of the wave write function and its arguments. 
In the next segment, we'll employ a graphical user interface constructed in MATLAB to audify high-resolution magnetometer data from the wind spacecraft.